okay, so the I found that the role of the head teacher was to teach the entire class, hoping that the kids at the top would improve. And then the role of the TA, my role, was to go to the bottom of the list and attempt to bring up the kids that were having behavioral issues or they were struggling with a certain concept. And so my goal was to light that that fire of being enthused about learning for the kids yeah. that were experiencing difficulty with that. And so as a singular teacher, how do you manage a classroom? I think that's such like, that's so true in like teaching. We see like, all right, we're going to instruct the ones that want to be here and the ones that are maybe like below grade level. If they have EA support, they have EA support and that look to help them get by and they'll meet their curricular goals. And then my thing, I think I always thought, what, are those, what about those kids in the middle? What are those kids that are like, kind of in like they're meeting or they're not like they're meeting or not fully exceeding grade level. So I always think about those kids that want to learn. They're kind of like little helpers too. Sometimes it's like, all right, we're going to do partner work. Who would want to work with such and such. So it's, it's, it's building that relationship with students. And then once that student maybe sees a student who's like excelling in math, for example, they work with someone who's maybe just like just meeting grade level, they get that little spark and they go, okay, like maybe we're doing, improper fractions and that kid helps shows the kid how to do it they started going and they get teach for them and then they do their assessment and they're now they're in that exceeding level so i think it's it's building that like culture with your students of like all right learning is fun learning is sick like this is the growth is so cool in academics and then just letting those kids that are kind of up those i would say like they're not the upper echelon they're kind of on the upper end of their academics giving them imposing them the challenge of like all right how can you be a leader in our classroom who could you help who could you help guide and then those other students who may not be or not yet meeting grade level they kind of it's pairing them together maybe as an example you might do math like you might adapt and do math groups so like doing a diagnostic test at the start of the at the start of the year seeing who's at what level pairing kids that are at the higher level together pairing the kids in the middle, the other level, and then the lower level. And then if you're fortunate to have other teachers that are released doing math, they can go in smaller groups and then they get that extra instruction time. So I think it's finding, it's learning to be adaptive, I think is one thing, especially with that. And that's a thing now in education. We have so many kids in the classroom and we do not have enough resources or funding mm -hmm. to help these kids meet their academic needs. It's interesting that you talk about the, diversifying the groups within the classroom. That's something that uh, Richard Tremblay talks about. He is a researcher into antisocial behavior yeah. amongst children. And something that he found would work would be taking an antisocial kid as young as you can find them basically, or else they, they get to a point where it's really difficult to turn it around. But you, you take a kid that's exhibiting antisocial behavior and you put them into a group full of the best kids that you can find essentially. And similar is what we were talking about earlier with us finding what my identity is based on your perception of me as well as my perception of myself. We find that middle ground. And so by having the greatest group of kids around that one kid, that one kid actually starts to develop more in the direction of those kids. So it's an immediate influence or not, maybe not immediate, but it's an influence from those kids that surround them. And that pulls them towards the, the socialized kids, essentially like these kids are socializing this, this antisocial kid. It's super cool. It's very interesting. It's, it's honestly, it's like it's a, you're a pro of your environment and you're some of your experiences. Mm -hmm. and it's exactly what it is. You put a kid in that environment, things are going to change. They're going to adapt and be like, all right, I can kind of come out of my shell a little more. I get a little more confidence. I get a little more extrinsic. They just, they develop. And it's, and it's really interesting to see that development of a kid who is like, at the start of the year might be really shy. And then come November it's like all right this kid's high energy they're working they're doing all this stuff so 